Hey, hello everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. And today we are doing part eight on our study of the book Proverbs. Uh, this is the eighth chapter we'll be talking about today. Uh, if you did not see the set first seven uh, studies on this, they are uploaded on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, so I, I hope you'll go back and watch those. We're going to begin with uh, chapter 8, verse 1, but first let me uh, ask uh, Brother Eric to introduce himself for the, to the audience. Hello, it's me, the hobo, uh, also known as Eric, and a host of other names, and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and uh, uh, that's about it. Okay, thank you. All right, brother. Here I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read these both in uh, KJV and also in the Amplified because the Amplified it kind of amplifies and, and expounds upon it a little bit. Uh, so let me post up the first here on uh, the. Um, KJV, I'll put up verses um, 1 through 10, just so you have it there in front of you. It won't let me post too many verses at one time in the comment section. It limits how much you can put. Okay. okay. Okay, there's the KJV, verses 1 through 10. And now I'm going to put up the... Uh, Amplified verses 1 through 10. Yeah, okay. Let, I'll start off reading it and then I'll ask you just to respond to it. Uh, first in the KJV. Um, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the end of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Um, now that uh, that's beautiful language, but I don't think it'll be as clear to us as we it would in the Amplified. So let me read it there, uh, and then I'll ask you to respond to it. Does not skillful and godly wisdom cry out, and understanding raise her voice? in contrast to the loose woman on the top of the heights beside the way where the paths meet stands wisdom skillful and godly at the gates uh, at the entrance of the town at the coming in at the door she cries out to you O men I call and my voice is directed to the sons of men oh you simple and thoughtless ones understand prudence you self-confident fools, be of an understanding heart. <laughs> All right, brother, what's your reaction to that? Well, that's quite a bit different from the King James Version. Uh, that first verse, uh, it seemed like it added uh, something in contrast to the loose. Where did that come from? Because that wasn't in the King James Version. Uh, that's a you good know what I mean? Yeah, that's a very good question. I'll tell you that that goes back to the previous chapter. Okay, yeah, that's probably where they got it from. Yeah, because when we did the last chapter, we were talking about oh. the was talking about this uh, this loose woman and the problem with uh, you know how we need to deal with these women that want to try to seduce us. So that uh, there was a big contrast there between the loose woman and the and the and the sister. Uh, the, the idea was. To embrace wisdom as your sister. Don't embrace the loose woman and get led astray into adultery and fornication. That was the last chapter. Well, okay, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so that's why they call it the amplified version. Yeah, and it's also um, 
it, it points out to us here that uh, the, the chapter divisions uh, shouldn't uh, enter into our uh, interpretation too much. I mean, they, they uh, I think man inserted the chapter divisions and the verse numbers. So uh, sometimes the end of one chapter continues into the beginning of another chapter. And sometimes within one chapter, the subject matter is totally different. It's not the same subject throughout the whole chapter. The, the, the subject may change within the chapter. So uh, we don't want to be too rigid thinking that, it, you know, uh, applying a, a chapter thinking it's only about one particular subject. All right. Uh, All right. So, and, and yet, I see the chapter divisions uh could they have been inspired do you do you suppose by chance well there are people that uh put a lot of faith in um, certain numbers uh thinking that numbers have a lot of significance with scriptures and they there are i know people who believe that uh the the chapters and verse numbers um are inspired and uh, there's a great deal that we can learn from from the numbers too I, I don't know if i have a lot of confidence in that i think that there may be some things that, that are we could apply from that and learn from it but I am, i'm afraid to put a lot of confidence in it uh, okay but uh, i was thinking like number eight is a special number uh it sort of represents jesus christ and uh Eight also represents what the uh, the the uh, first day, not the first day, but uh, resurrection day, hmm. doesn't it? I don't. Uh, know. And then I did a uh, study on. Go ahead. And then uh, it, it almost appears that wisdom is. Uh, personified as Jesus Christ doesn't it well um, I haven't thought about that being uh, um, personified as Jesus but it we did discuss from the very beginning very beginning of Proverbs uh, wisdom has been personified as a woman uh, it's uh, often referred to as in look at verse look at verse 2 it says she standeth in the top of high places uh, and the the uh, the word she is a reference to the subject wisdom, so it is personified as this woman uh, throughout the whole book of Proverbs. Uh, I don't see the, the connection to uh, to Jesus in here, and in in numerology, the study of numbers in the scriptures, uh, eight. I'm not familiar with that. I've studied uh, it many years ago. I don't have it. Uh, you know, so memorized that I can tell you what all the numbers mean. So I, I, I'm not going to dispute what you're saying about the number eight, but I don't, I don't really know enough about it to, to say. Okay, well, maybe that's why uh, the Proverbs uh, traditionally has always been a big stumbling block for me. And it actually led me to the cross of Christ. Because uh, in my youth, I tried to apply the Proverbs uh, in perfection, but I constantly failed, and I was constantly drawn back to the cross and uh, uh, hmm. told Jesus I couldn't do it, and I needed him to do it for me. Oh, and I was on that continual, I did that. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, Go ahead. I can see how I can see how. Uh, yes. If, if a person on the, through their own power tries to apply all the teachings in Proverbs, and, and through their own strength try to change themselves to conform to Proverbs, they'd they'd be very frustrated and realize that uh, uh, it, it, it's impossible. And that's why Jesus said. Um, when his apostles asked him, well, if, how can anyone be saved? And he said, well, with man it is impossible, but with God it is possible. So uh, 
uh, that's the person that's what every person must come to understand is that trying to accomplish righteousness and even though all the wisdom that we learned from Proverbs as you cited here you said you tried to do that and it all it taught you was that you were unable to that's the first thing and I think a person must understand to get saved is that they're they're in a hopeless situation and and they need uh, they need Jesus and the Holy Spirit to to save them and transform them that they don't have the power on their own to do it um, all right let's look at this uh, verse uh, verses one by one and analyze a little more doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice um, she standeth in the top of high places by the the way in the places of the paths he crieth at the gates at the entry of the city at the coming of the at the doors oh so this is it, it, it's saying look wisdom uh, this this woman wisdom now we know it's not truly a, a woman but the concept the virtue of wisdom uh, is is there and, and 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 it's there wanting to embrace us and and, and help us to, so that we can have wisdom under understanding uh, but the question is wisdom is there but will we embrace wisdom and and uh, uh, gain wisdom or not that's the question uh, we look at verse 5 verse 5 I'm going to ask you to look at verse 5 here uh, oh ye simple understand wisdom and ye fools be ye of an understanding heart so wisdom and understanding are two words that are used together uh, like uh, they're paired together all the time um, and to me oh do you, do you see any distinction between wisdom and understanding that is there anything that comes out sticks out to you is this is the big difference between the two yes I do uh, to me uh, wisdom is understanding uh, applied yeah that's how I see it too. A person can understand a lot of things, uh, but then if they don't apply it to their lives, they're, then they're unwise. So when we understand these truths and then we apply it to our lives, then that is wisdom. I, I totally agree with that. So, um, but he says, oh ye simple. Let me look at that in the Amplify, verse 5. They should have just put my name there. Instead of simple, just put my name there. <laughs> <laughs> well, if everybody else was as humble as you, they'd have to admit that anybody can put their name in that place. Uh, oh, ye simple, yeah. thoughtless ones. Uh, understand prudence. Now, what is, what is prudence? Well, in the KJV, it says wisdom. Uh huh. Okay. You self confident fools, um, be of an understanding heart. Okay. So, uh, and ye fools, uh, be ye of an understanding heart. Uh, so, we know that the Amplified is it takes scriptures and then it's basically an Amplified version is, is like what we're doing right now. We're reading the scriptures in the KJV, and then we're amplifying our own opinion about you know, trying to understand what it means. And the Amplified version is doing the same thing, except whoever wrote the Amplified, whether it was an individual or a committee of people, they're adding in their interpretation of, of what this all means. And they think that, uh, th in this case, they're saying that this uh, verse 5, O ye simple, understand wisdom. Well, in the Amplified it says, uh, O ye simple and thoughtless ones. Now, I don't know how they come up, and he says, understand prudence. Uh, maybe it's because they've read ahead. I think if we read ahead, uh, I don't know what the rest of the chapter is. I haven't gone ahead to study it out in advance. Of course, I read the book of Proverbs, uh, all of it, oh, many times over the years. Uh, but today, I haven't looked ahead. I don't know what verses are coming next. But maybe these, the Amplified Version is considering the verses that are coming next. And that's why they're putting in 
these words. Um, um, these thoughtless ones and self-confident fools. Well, let's see as we go ahead and see if that is, is my, that's my guess, that they put that in there because as we go along in the study, we find out that that's really an ac accurate description of these people. What do you think? I'm not seeing it. I'm scanning ahead and I'm not seeing it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it and see. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just taking a, a wild guess. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why they would insert those words uh, related to, uh, uh, as it says, uh, oh, ye simple, simple ones. And they say they're thoughtless ones. And un understand prudence rather than wisdom. Now, what is prudence? While we're on the subject, while we're, since we're looking at that word, let's try to figure out what that means. If someone is prudent, what does that mean? I think it'd be wise. I oh, mean, I would have to Google that one. I think that, uh, do you remember our first uh, Bush president, uh, the, the older Bush? Uh, he was famous for uh, using this word prudent. He said that wouldn't be yeah. prudent wouldn't be prudent. In other words, if you're not prudent, that means you've made an unwise decision. You've made done an unwise thing. Prudence, I think, means wisdom. So I think that they're using just another word that means the same thing. But why don't we look up okay. prudence? Um, you want to look up prudence? Uh, and I'll, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, I can do a, we'll see. Okay. See if I have a, do I have my dictionary tool still up here or not? Dictionary, yeah, there it is. Okay, it says. Uh, I'm going to Google it. Yeah, I got the definition here. It says careful or wise in handling practical matters characterized by or resulting from care or wisdom. So they're, they're correct in, in being able to use the word prudence and wisdom interchangeably. Okay? All right. Okay, okay. so they're pretty much synonymous. Yeah, yeah. So now let's go back to the KJV, and I'll go with verse 6. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Now, who is this speaking in when it says, I will speak of excellent things? There's no doubt who that is. It's the wisdom herself. Yes. That's wisdom personified. As we said earlier, wisdom is uh, pr pr presented to us as a woman speaking to us, teaching us. And so uh, that is uh, when it says, I will, it's talking about this personification of wisdom. Um, so then um, for here, here, for I will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. <laughs> okay. Let's say the, look at the amplified. Uh, it says, um, here, for I will speak excellent and princely things, and the opening of my lips shall be for right things. For my mouth shall utter truth, and wrongdoing is detestable and loathsome to my lips. Yeah. So, you know, that things like... Um, uh, wrongdoings, uh, evil acts, these things, of course, are not part of wisdom. Those things would be part of un, uh, un, right. un, un there's a whole list. Yeah. So now I'm going to go back to the uh, verse 8 in the KJV. It says, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing froward or perverse in them. You know, this is kind of reminding me about uh, the descriptions of, of God himself. 
you know, there is no evil in God. There is no lies coming from God, only truth. And there is a, uh, there is a part of, I think it's a Song of Solomon right. that talks about wisdom and uh, saying it has no, uh, it, it's, I know that Jehovah Witnesses use that verse to try to show that uh, they misrepresent it, saying that Jesus had a beginning. Uh, I don't remember exactly how the argument goes, but what they're missing is the fact that uh, this person that we find in the Song of Solomon is, is wisdom. It's not Jesus, it's wisdom. Uh, but... Um, here we can see that, that wisdom is, is certainly one of the attributes of God. God is omniscient, and there is no evil from, coming from God's lips. There is no, are no evil acts coming from God, and that's, that's how this is describing wisdom. Right. And uh, I'm not sure about uh, the Jovis, and uh, they're clearly wrong about the... Uh, Jesus Christ uh, being created, and uh, uh, I admonish them to repent of that false doctrine and come to the truth in Christ Jesus uh, and be saved and drop that uh, the doctrines that are keeping them from entering the kingdom of God. It's terrible. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh... It's, it's very easy to, um, first of all, uh, honestly misunderstand scriptures uh, and, and, and be misled. Uh, like a Jehovah Witness is taught certain things by their organization, and they so they just accept them. Um, but uh, sometimes people are purposely deceiving others because of misrepresenting the meaning. But the problem there really is that if they just read that Song of Solomon in context and understood that it's talking about the wisdom, but it's but it, but wisdom as it is here in Proverbs has been personified, uh, then they would they would understand that it doesn't apply to, to Jesus at all. Um, okay, so a verse eight in the uh, Amplified says, "All the words of my mouth are righteous." upright and in right standing with God. There is nothing contrary to truth or crooked in them. So, uh, we know that God is uh, all virtuous, is, all, uh, is love, mercy, justice, grace, truth. He's, he's, he's all um, virtue. In wisdom, uh, God would have to have wisdom because uh, uh, wisdom is understanding and the application of understanding, as you said. So this must be an, also an attribute of God, wisdom. And so nothing is going to come from the mouth of wisdom that is not in, in uh, an agreement with, with, the, with God himself. Let's look at verse 9 in KJV here. It says, uh, They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. And verse 10, Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. That's pretty self-explanatory, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, God's word is so far above all the riches of this world and his salvation and his gospel is so precious and it's just uh, ridiculous yeah i'm going to um paste in the um, next 10 verses of uh these translations here now so i'll go verse 20 through 11 here kkb we'll see Okay, and then uh, we got uh, verse 20 through 11 in the Amplified now.
Okay. So now we got uh, KJV verse 11 says, uh, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Well, you remember in chapter one, uh, we, uh, I, I don't remember if you were with me on chapter one, but we talked quite a bit about the idea that Solomon was famous for wisdom. And there, he, he, when he became king, he, he prayed for one thing. And he prayed for wisdom. He could have prayed for God to give him anything. I, I can't remember if God asked him, what do you want? Uh, but he chose wisdom, what he thought was to be the most desirable thing. And, and of course, here in, in Proverbs, it, it's telling us over and over again, the value of wisdom is greater than everything else in terms of uh, you know, wealth, fame, success, all these things, you know, um, silver, gold, rubies, precious gems, none of those things compare to the value of wisdom. And I, I think it's because when you have wisdom, then uh, you are able to get all the other things, if, if, if that's your conclusion. But sometimes I think when a person gets wisdom, they might conclude that those other things are so insignificant and unimportant, they might not even pursue them all. What do you think? Yes, uh, before the cross, that might have been a problem. But after the cross, it's no longer a problem because Jesus says, if you seek him first, he'll take care of all that other stuff. Yeah. But before that, they had to take care of their own house and then they took care of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, so the things that we want... Uh, you know, uh, health, prosperity, success, uh, love, relationships, friendships, all these things. First, of course, the priority is get the kingdom of God. And we only get into the kingdom of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And once we've done that, then we either get all those things, or I think another possibility is our desires actually change. I know that after I got saved, my interests and my desires totally changed from what they were before. Um, the things that I worked hard for, my ambitions and things, uh, I, I didn't have those same kinds of ambitions. My ambition was for uh, understanding the scriptures and for fellowship and for ministry work. And that's, that's, that was my, uh, you know, Jesus says that, you know, the scripture says, uh, 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 love God with all your heart and, and um, no, lean on, on your own understanding or trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on, on your own understanding but what's the next verse about and I will give you the desires of your heart that's that's in Proverbs first couple of chapters in other words if you, if you just do the, the desires of your heart he will give you but it's, what I've discovered is the desires of my heart became different. He, he not only gives me the desires of my heart, but he's transformed me so that my desires are different than they used to be. Amen to that. And woe to the person that thinks God's going to give you your desires, what your, your lustful desires. No. Nay, for those lustful desires. Uh, God gives us a new heart when we come into Christ Jesus, and new desires come along with it, and we can all testify to that. And thus, those new desires that we desire, we receive according to his promises, which we believe in. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, uh, verse 12 in the KJV says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge 
of witty inventions. <laughs> oh, man. Brother, I don't know how you feel about the, the, the scriptures and translations and stuff, but I, I, for many years I was a KJV only advocate, and now I'm what uh, Brother Joe Byron coined the term uh, a KJV firstist instead of a KJV onlyist. I want to look at the KJV first, but there's many times where the language kind of gets, it, uh, even though it is the most beautiful, it's poetic, it's Shakespearean, uh, and I love it, but then sometimes some of the things just perplex me, the way it's phrased. And I find it helpful to look at uh, Amplified or something else too. But isn't this interesting how it's phrased here? I, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. <laughs> I, I'd have to like really break that down to try to figure out knowledge of witty inventions. We can look at uh, Amplified next, but do you have any uh, explanation of verse 12 first? Yes, I absolutely do, Brother Luke. Uh, by uh, career, I am an industrial electrician, and I rely heavily upon uh, troubleshooting skills uh, to keep these machines running. And so that particular verse does ring true to me uh, in that respect. And I have become the top uh, troubleshooter in the industry that I know of. And uh, due to the wisdom and the uh, logic uh, abilities that the good Lord has given me. Uh, okay. Very interesting. That's a, that's a fascinating uh, little fact you gave me there. I'm glad to know that. Um, so uh, let's look at verse 12 in the Amplified and see if, how it phrases it. I, wisdom from God, make prudence my dwelling, and I find out knowledge and discretion. Okay, um, it's not it's not nearly as pretty as it as the um, witty inventions. Okay, we'll go to thirteen in the KJV. Uh, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. The froward mouth, that's a really interesting term. We talked about that in a previous study. Um, I forgot exactly what froward means, but I think it's dis a disagreeable person. A person that's just really contrary all the time, just wants to disagree. I, I have to, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I encounter a lot of those people on YouTube that with a froward mouth, they just want to disagree on everything and, and be, be uh, disagreeable. Uh, uh -huh. So, okay. Um, yeah, that's exactly what that is. Okay. I forgot what that meant. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll look at verse 14 now in the KJV. 14 is, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Uh, 15, by, my, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. 17, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Now, again, it's very easy for the person to read this and lose, uh, lose sight of the fact that this is wisdom personified. Uh, people uh, might want to apply verses like this towards uh, to Jesus or, or the fa Father God. Or, and, uh, you know, even though these ideas apply to, to God, uh, that's really not the subject of this chapter. This point is it's talking about wisdom. And so wisdom says, uh, by me, princes rule. Wisdom says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Uh, if you seek wisdom, especially when you're young, it would it's very advantageous as a young person to seek wisdom, to desire it. It's more precious than gold and silver. So if a young person will seek it, then wisdom uh, is uh, more precious, and they'll be blessed because of they gained wisdom early in their life. I, 
uh, I believe my son, who's 30, uh, 35 years old now, he's, uh, he's got a lot wiser than I was at that age. Uh, uh, some people come to me for counsel, some of the brethren, and, and you know, they contact me and want my advice on something and thinking that maybe I have a little wisdom because I'm older. But, you know, as we get older, we don't always get wiser. There's there some people that are old that still remain fools. And then there are some young people that, as we see here in this verse here, early, early they seek wisdom and they, they get wise at a younger age. What a blessing that would be. I, I wish I had wisdom when I was young. Amen to that. I believe it's of uh, supreme importance uh, that our young people uh, uh, search out wisdom in their youth because I believe there's an expiration uh, date on wisdom. If they don't do it when they're young, uh, uh, we're going to find out the repercussions very soon here. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to, uh, I'm looking at these verses in the Amplified now. It's verse 14 says, I have counsel and sound knowledge. This is wisdom speaking, saying, look, you should be seeking wisdom because I have I have counsel and sound knowledge. I have understanding. I have might and power. So I hope a person listening now will say, yes, yes, I, these are, I want this. And I, gain, I get all this through wisdom. And he says, by me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges and governors of the earth. I love those who love me. And those who seek me early and diligently shall find me. So I mean, it's, it's you said there is an expiration date here coming up that we our idea haven't read ahead, but I'm not sure if it's in this chapter, but I've read uh, where the uh, repercussions of uh, despising wisdom in your youth. Uh, we're going to find out sooner or later. Uh, what the book of Proverbs says about that, and it's not pretty, I guarantee you. Okay, uh, okay, let me read this, go back to the KJV again. Uh, verse, starting with uh, verse 18, uh, riches and honor are with me. So, you know, it, Wisdom is telling us that, hey, uh, if, if you seek wisdom and you gain wisdom, along with that, you, you will also gain riches and honor, enduring wealth and righteousness. So you can see why Solomon, um, he was wise enough already to understand of all the things he could pray for and ask and God to grant him. He thought, wisdom is what I want, because with riz, wisdom, you get riches and honor and all the other things, because you it starts with being wise uprightness in every area and relation and right standing with god my fruit is better than gold yes than refined gold my increase than choice silver wisdom walk in the way of righteousness moral and spiritual rectitude oops i'm on uh, i'm sorry i jumped in. i switched over to the uh uh, amplified too soon here. Um, uh, verse 18 in KJV. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. So that's all the way through verse 20 in the KJV. So, you know, I, I, there's a lot of uh, repetition through the uh, 31 chapters of, um, of Proverbs. Uh, we have recurring themes coming up. Uh, there, there's a contrast between um, uh, wisdom and foolishness. Now, you can either be wise or you can be a fool. And it talks about uh, a lot of times this seductive woman comes up, this uh, strange woman comes up over and over again in the Proverbs. And, and the, the theme, the idea of uh, associating with bad people will get you into trouble. 
and and these themes recur from one chapter to the next, and uh, it really drives home this point, all these points that uh, this these are all things that you you should be doing and applying to your life because they're wise. It's wise to live your life in this way. Um, but the first thing a person should do if they're wise uh, is I think in Timothy it says that uh, um, wisdom uh, Timothy got wisdom unto salvation so I mean it would be really actually quite foolish to get wisdom and through wisdom you gain wealth and success and fame and ha happiness in this world and then you die and go to hell because the, the the one thing that you didn't get was wisdom unto salvation so the first thing a person should seek if they really are wise is salvation through faith in jesus christ and, and then once they've gotten that then uh, the wisdom can give them other things in this world to make their life much better. Brother, what's your response to that? Absolutely. Salvation, the good news of Jesus Christ is of supreme importance. And the repetition that is shown in the Proverbs is there uh, for a reason, uh, because uh, repetition is the key to learning. And one thing I've discovered is uh, indoctrination works, whether it be indoctrination to the truth or indoctrination to the lie. It, indoctrination works. And that's why we got our job cut out for us, uh, uh, freeing people that have been indoctrinated into a lie. Yeah, and a amen to, to that. And uh, I'm putting up the next 10 verses from KJV and Amplified now, verses uh, 21 through 30. Okay, so now let's go to verse 21 in the KJV. Uh, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. So we can see that there are a lot of like, this term uh, fringe benefits. Uh, Sometimes people get a job, they get hired into a position, and they get a salary, and then they also have many other what they call fringe benefits. Maybe they get a company car to drive. Maybe, maybe they get um, um, uh, travel expenses, uh, business expenses, and a list of other things, Vac uh, real good vacation time. These are fringe benefits that, that come along with the job. And I'm seeing here that uh, this is telling us that when you get wisdom, all these other things come along with it. These are the fringe benefits. By, by That's how valuable and desirable wisdom is. When you seek wisdom and you gain wisdom, then you get all these other fringe benefits, these other blessings, and, and great uh, things happen in your life. And that's by design. God designed it that way intentionally okay look at I'm gonna look at 21 in the, in the amplified it says that I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches and that I may fill their treasures well this inserts the word true riches and uh, uh, substance um, well, I think that the, uh, the Amplified is trying to make the point that these riches are not necessarily, uh, you know, financial gain. A person can have a very rich life, but have a modest uh, financial uh, position. 
Uh, and so true riches, what we, what we learn uh, through wisdom is that sometimes the really valuable things are friendships, family, love, fellowship. Now, these things uh, are the, really the, the true riches, the true blessings, uh, more so than, you know, I mean, what would good would it do you if you had a, a ton of money, but, but uh, you know, uh, you, you didn't have any true friends. You only had friends who were hangers on who were using you for your money, but no, they didn't really care for you or really like you. It's just they just wanted to benefit from your wealth. Um, that would be really, really sad. So, hey, brother, Bill's here with us now. Hello, Bill. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. I've just, just got in. I just had some quality time with the wife uptown. I've just got back, so I thought I'll try and get in for the, for the end of this. Okay. Well, brother, brother Bill, I want you to know that uh, what you just said about this quality time with your wife, that is. Uh, that is fits right along with the study of wisdom. You're certainly wise to, uh, wise. to give your wife the time that she wants, and, and and have this quality time with her. And your see, that's another. We we're talking about when you gain wisdom, you get all these fringe benefits with them, with it. And and some of the fringe benefits are not just you know financial gain. It's relationships, friendships, love, family, all these things. And you just said something that fits right along with, with what you gained with wisdom. Oh, Sandy, well, that's a result that just come in and it fits in nicely, result. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Eric was saying something when I interrupted. I'm sorry, Eric. Oh, I just said, well done. Well done, Bill. Yes. Yeah, okay, Brother Bill, we're in Chapter 8 of Proverbs. I'm posting it up in the KJV and the Amplified both. We're looking at we're on verse 21 now, uh, and so uh, I've got it posted in the comment section. I don't know if you can see it because when you join, are all the comments up there, or is it a, a new screen? No, nah, no, nah, any new comments that I see come in, yeah. Okay, well I'll post it again right now, just so, so you have it here. Well, actually, it's uh, not let me. Now let me do it here, okay. What verses are we on? And I, I, can, I can look it up on uh, Bible okay. Gateway. Chapter 8, verse 21. Um, now, have a look. Yeah. It says, That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, I will fill their treasures. Um, it's talking about the, uh, uh, you know, we're, we, we know that wisdom is, has been personified as a woman. We've talked about that, and then we see that it uh, is uh, saying that with wisdom, he will cause that those people who love wisdom will inherit substance too. Uh, let me back up and ask you to comment about something I said early, early Bill, as it... Uh, um, uh, uh, we're promised that uh, you know that when we we uh, what is that verse in Proverbs that says um, um, uh, trust the Lord and, and uh, I will give you the desires of your heart or it's it's not that is it? Psalm I think that's Psalm thirty seven four that's that's delight thyself in the Lord also and He should give you the desires of thine heart. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, but but the the thing that I've discovered is that uh, I've received the desires of my heart, but the desires of my heart are a lot different than they used to be. Uh, so can you, uh, like for example, this time you spent with your wife, you know, maybe before you were saved, you had different kind of desires. But, but, but now, uh, spending time with your wife is, is uh, something that you really desire and, and is a blessing. Uh, because because the spirit has transformed you and transformed your desires. Yeah, yeah. I suppose for me though, because you brought up that verse, that that's a a special verse that that me and the wife have always had. You now even you know before we was married and we was caught and and speak to each other, 
you know, the Lord prompted that very same verse on, on my heart and my wife's heart the same day. And it was miraculous. And, you know, and we both, you know, came to the conclusion that, that, that if, we, if we grow into a deeper relationship with Christ and, you know, delight ourselves in him, that he will, you know, we, we will, you know, land up marrying, we'll have a fruitful life, bear children and stuff. And God has been good there, you know, because we initially took that leap of faith and trusted God at his word that we was going to delight ourselves in him because he is good and he will give us the desires of our heart. And, and the desire of both my wife and myself was that, that, that we, we'd, we'd marry and, and we'd stay married and, and, you know, whatever come what may in life, we will always keep that bond of love between me and the wife. And God has been really good in that. And like I said, I've been married 14 years to to, to, to Teresa, and, and you know it's been wonderful. So God has kept his cut, his half of the bargain. We kept ours by that initial leap of faith to to to, to light in in Christ, and he has kept up his part of the bargain, and and he's you know filled us with love and grace for one another, you know, ever since. So it's a wonderful, wonderful psalm that is. Yeah. Uh. I just discovered that uh, Brother Eric's been married for 28 years, and he's uh, um, he's the top of his field in his uh, I forgot the the exact field, some kind of electrical analysis, I, uh, I think. But but uh, he's he, we were talking about a verse earlier about that used the term witty inventions, and uh, Brother Eric was talking about the. The idea of witty inventions is he's been blessed with a mind that allows him to analyze these technical things and electrical problems, I guess. So, and um, so I've learned a few new facts about Brother Eric today. That's been very interesting. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go to verse uh, uh, 22 now. Uh, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountain, no fountains bounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Uh, now, this is reminding me of the problem that we have, I, I think it was in Song, Song of Solomon. It's a section uh, where uh, the, the Jehovah Witnesses uh, argue that it's about Jesus and saying that God brought him forth and he had a beginning, he's created. Um, but in Song of Solomon, and right here in this section here, uh, if a person tries to apply that to Jesus, uh, then it would be a foolish mistake because the entire chapter is not talking about Jesus. It's talking about a woman of, uh, who is the personification of, of wisdom. Wisdom, he says, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Uh, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. There were no depths. I was brought forth. See, when they say I was brought forth, they're going to try to argue that Jesus was brought forth as a, a created being, um, so you, you can can you can see the problem that uh, how the scriptures can be twisted to uh, say something that's a you know, horrible heresy uh, when it's it's not even talking about Jesus in this section. It's talking about uh, wisdom. Well, yeah, it's absolutely spot on, and this is why you know context is so important. You know, you, when, when you read the Bible, the scriptures, you've got to know, you know, who's it talking to, what it's talking about, and, and, and all these things. And, you know, if you don't use context, you can land up like the JWs and, and create a doctrine out of a few verses that, that don't even apply to whatever they're talking about. Um, I will, Let me read this in the uh, Amplified, and I bet they do this the same thing in Song of Solomon, which is a very, very helpful thing. Because it says, I'll read the same thing in song and uh, Amplify now, it says, That I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches, 
that I may fill their treasuries. The Lord formed and brought me wisdom forth at the beginning of his way. You see right there, it inserts the word wisdom so that we people will not misconstrue that this could be talking about Jesus. This, hey, no, don't try to insert Jesus here. This whole subject is discussion is about wisdom. It's still talking about wisdom. Um, and brought me wisdom forth at the beginning of his way before his acts of old. I, wisdom, was inaugurated and ordained from everlasting, from the beginning, before ever the earth existed. When there were no dip, deeps, uh, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains laden with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. So you see, um, uh, if a person didn't keep in mind that this whole chapter and this whole book of Proverbs is about wisdom, uh, they, they could twist the scriptures and, and try to make it talking about the, the beginning of Jesus. Well, we don't want that now. Uh, we want them to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and uh, drop their false... Uh, doctrines that are preventing them from coming to the truth and uh, uh, that being said uh, I pray for them uh, that they will uh, heed uh, this warning and uh, uh, right now my wife is telling me I need to spend some quality time with her and it's time for me to bail out. I'm I'm sorry to leave you guys like this. Okay, it's been it's been a pleasure, and thank you very much, and a great honor to uh, sit here on this uh, panel. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll see you guys and carry on. Thank you, brother. Okay. Have a good have a good time with your wife. Thank have you. Some good QT. Have some QT. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Brother Bill, you just had some quality time with your wife, and now Eric's going for some with his wife. And um, I've already had some earlier in the day with my wife. Uh, uh, while I'm on the subject, I might ask everybody who's watching this to play, pray for my wife's mother, who's very, very ill. And uh, she's 85 years old now. So please pray, pray for my wife's mother. My wife's quite distressed over this now. Uh, let's go to the uh, Bill do you have anything else to say about those verses and how I apply that to the false teaching of the JWs well, I, only that you know you're spot on and, and unfortunate with a lot of these cults and things that they try and take any fanatic context but you know the context is, is in as you say the, the passages you know it's blatantly obvious to us mm-hmm Okay, um, so let me read on, continue reading on the KJV. Um, I'll go with uh, 20, verse 25. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I, was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he was... He set a compass upon the face of the depth. Uh, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. I'll stop with verse 30 for now. Uh, so, uh, first we know this is applying to uh, wisdom, uh, and, and so speak on that, and then let's, let's stay on this, uh, correcting this error taught by the JWs, how they can mis, misinterpret this, these verses. Yeah, yeah, well, like I said, because we, we know the context, and, and we've read, you know, from the beginning of the proverb, we know, you know, when it's talking about I, it's talking about wisdom. It's not talking about a person as in Christ. And, yeah, you can see how they could, if they haven't got the context, manipulate that. So every time I is mentioned, you know, they're talking about Christ. 
but you know that'd be a perversion and, and, and it isn't the context of the actual proverb itself mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's to me that one of the sad things is that there there are so many um, uh, babes in Christ that that don't have uh, enough study behind them to to be able to defend themselves against someone like a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon or something when they come to their home and they start showing these verses and and uh, making them think that. Uh, Jesus is not eternal God Almighty or we're not saved by faith alone or we could lose our salvation and, and a, a novice who hasn't studied the scriptures and doesn't know uh, what we're the, the, like what we're discussing today the, the correct understanding of these verses they could be so easily misled uh, it, it's really really sad it's very very dangerous uh, I just wish they wouldn't even let them in their door. That's that's what the scriptures say. It says don't even open up your door for these people. But a lot of the baby Christians, they don't even understand that Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and, and some others are are um, fit into that category of uh, uh, false gospels, cult cults that uh, we we are not supposed to even entertain them in our homes. Yeah, yeah, I agree, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go to now uh, uh, KJV verse uh, 31. Rejoicing in the ha habitab habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For, for whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Okay, brother, what's your reaction to that? Well, yeah, again, it is talking about wisdom. It's not talking about a person, but, you know, it brings us back to a few weeks ago where we was talking about, you know, uncommon sense. It used to be common sense. You know, if, if, if you know, you... you you do follow you know the ways of the lord it it aids us you know in the physical realm you know we will be blessed it says and we will you know keep out of danger you know this is all common sense stuff that that, that solomon has given here but again you can see you know why a, a jehovah's witness and and a babe in christ even could read this you know they could also g out of this you know that, that this is talking about Christ and they get ever so confused but the correct you know context is wisdom and, and these are wise signs and, and you know if, if we even as Christians even in the New Testament if, if we was to you know hark and listen and try and walk within these these wise signs you know our life would be something much easier you know we err uh, we fall short all the time but you know if we, if we could read for the Proverbs and use it as common sense you know our lives physically speaking would be so much easier mm -hmm. yeah the uh as as we went through this chapter um i i could see that um many many of these verses could have been spoken by god talking about himself because god has these attributes too uh, as, as you read it, you can think that instead of wisdom, it says I, and, and then it goes on. And, but, but when we put in uh, I wisdom, then we understand that it's, it's coming from a perspective of from wisdom, not from God. And yet, I could also see how God has these same attributes in terms of uh, 
Um, he's, he, he's not evil and he, he detests uh, evil and wrongdoings and so on. And uh, so I do think that, you know, God being love and mercy and justice and uh, has all these wonderful attributes, he doesn't have any bad attributes. Uh, our wisdom also would be an attribute of God. And uh, I asked, Brother Eric, earlier, I, I, I said, it says, wisdom and understanding are two words that, they're, that are constantly put next to each other. And, and, and is there a difference between wisdom and understanding? And Brother Eric said, is, says, uh, wisdom is the application of understanding. And that's how I see it, too, that, that uh, a person can understand right and wrong and you know, uh, doing the right things and working hard and, and trying to, uh, yeah, you know, do the things that uh, will lead to success and happiness. And, uh, but they can understand those things. But unless they actually apply those things, they're not really wise, are they? That's right, yeah. You know, if, if, if you had spiritual understanding, and unless you put it in a practical practice, then it won't avail you much, will it? <laughs> you know, you might be able to understand things but unless you do them you kind of you know it, it, it's of no use mm -hmm. and, uh, you know the, on the same vein as obviously you and eric were speaking of earlier you know there's a vast difference between knowing to do something you know right or wrong and actually doing something you know well, yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> All right, let me read these last verses here in the Amplified Version and, and see if there's anything that, that we can gain from that. Uh, uh, verse, starting with verse 31. Rejoicing in his inhabited earth and delighting in the sons of men. Now, therefore, listen to me, O you sons, for blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not refuse or neglect it. Bless, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me wisdom, finds life, and draws forth and obtains favor from the land. But he who misses me or sins against me wrongs and injures himself. All who hate me love and court death. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I can see how we could put Jesus into this because it does, uh, the same principles apply to, to Jesus, but, it, but it's not written about Jesus. And yet, I can see that the same principles apply to him. But it would be wrong to think this is talking about Jesus because in some cases, some places, it talks about how he was brought forth. And that's where the Jehovah Witnesses um, uh, come to this false conclusion that Jesus is not eternal God Almighty, but, but created by God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like I said that when I was reading that as the last verse, I suppose they could really manipulate, you know, because it says, But he that sinneth against me, wrong of his own soul, and all that hate me, loveth death. So you could, you could if you was to, again, I suggest that incorrectly, you could say that is speaking about God, you know, that if you sin against God, you hate him, blah, 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 and you embrace death in that circumstance. But because we know, we exegete properly, that it's talking about wisdom, and that fits in perfectly anyway. You know, because we, we, we already decided that, that predominantly these wise things are, pertain to physical matters of the now, the here and now. So if, if, you, if you ignore wisdom, you ignore common sense, you know, it could land up in death. You know, common sense tells you that you know, you don't cross a road, you know, while there's traffic flying across, you know. So wisdom would say don't cross the road until the traffic goes. You can choose. You have a free choice. You ignore that and get run over and killed. But if you use wisdom properly, you wait until the traffic goes, then you cross the road. And the same sort of thing, you know, applications in life. You know, if you listen to these, these wise 
signs which we know come straight from God, you know, unto Solomon, you know, it is good for our longevity and, and good for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I knew years ago that um, um, the Jehovah Witnesses would go to, I'm pretty sure it's Song of Solomon when it, it's talking about wisdom, very much the same as what we're seeing here in this chapter. And and, uh, and use that to lead some poor, ignorant Christian, or let's say a person that's not a Christian, but but uh, they're uh, they could be a Christian, uh, except that they they happen to meet the Jehovah Witness first, and and they get taught by the Jehovah Witness that this is about Jesus, and, and that uh, it shows that Jesus. He's not eternal God, but he's he's a little God. He's created by God, and so they uh, that poor ignorant person could get snatched up by the Jehovah Witnesses and drawn into that uh, cult by misusing this. So I, I, you know, I was familiar with this being in the Song of Solomon, but I had forgotten about this being in Proverbs also. Um, and of course, it's it's all about wisdom, but I I saw some verses in this today that. That the Jehovah Witnesses could twist in the same way. So you really, I, I'm hoping that somebody watching this now, this will prevent them from being, uh, you know, misled uh, by, by the Jehovah Witnesses. Well, brother, uh, I guess that... Uh, I, just, I, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, because they like to manipulate and misinterpret you know, Hebrews 1, 5, and Colossians is a classic one. You know, that, that you know, talking about Jesus being the the firstborn. And, and they try and make out that, you know, he was created. But, you know, again, that's if you eisegete a particular passage and, and you come to your own snow, when in actual fact the, the context of that whole passage, especially in Colossians, is that Christ is the first fruit, the firstborn, the first of the resurrection so this is what they often do that they will isogee instead of exegete that they will manipulate one passage out of context and and distort to, to, to come up with these these you know silly scenarios and, and the, these foolish heresies but that is why we've all got to be you know anyone listening you know we're okay on the panel just me and you now but generally you know we're, we're, we're learned in the scriptures and we've learned over many years how to study properly and be a good brain. But many newborn Christians, you know, they're, they're lacking in that. And, and it just takes, you know, a bit of confusion, doesn't it? You know, Joe's witness saying, well, Jesus was the firstborn. And they think, oh, he must have been created. But not having the context. And that is what is important. While we do these studies, as we generally do, we give them the context at the same time. Oh, you mute it, Dan. You mute it, Luke. <laughs> okay. For, for a, a much more um, a thorough uh, refutation of all these false teachings uh, about Jesus um, uh, being eternal, not being the eternal God Almighty, if, if you have anybody teaching you that and you want to know what the scriptures actually say about it, I have a playlist called titled uh, The Deity of Christ proven and I have a lot of videos on there that address all of these all these false uh, in, interpretations of verses and so that you can understand that uh, um, these these verses that they use are misunderstood misused and sometimes uh, done on purpose uh, because to deceive you there's a saying that a text taken out of context is a pretext and a, a, a pretext means that you have a, um, uh, a premeditated plan to deceive someone it, it's a pretext my plan in advance is to take the scripture out so I can trick you so that's why uh, of all of the core uh, principles of Bible study one of the main is always read things in context I and mean, if we read these some of these verses today out of context and not realizing that these verses are talking not about Jesus but about wisdom 
uh, but it's personified wisdom, referring it to wisdom as she. And then you would understand, hey, first of all, Jesus is not a she. And, and this is not talking about Jesus, it's talking about the, the, the virtue of wisdom. So, uh, yeah, go to my playlist, uh, Deed of Christ, Christ Proven, for a lot more uh, uh, teaching on this. Well, brother, we've completed this chapter, and I, my intention is, I know we're not at a two-hour limit here, but uh, my intention is to do one chapter in each study. So uh, I guess we'll end this study, but not without doing the telling them about the most wise thing that they can do. Uh, from, from all the wise uh, wisdom that we gain from Proverbs, it, it wouldn't help anybody in their, at all if, if they learned how to be wise and gain riches and gain happiness and gain health and gain fame, and yet they die and they go to hell. Well, what good did all that wisdom do them, <laughs> do them if they don't ever get to go to heaven? We want to make sure they understand uh, wisdom unto salvation. So I'll ask you to tell anybody now who wants to know, well, okay, if I want to go to heaven, <laughs> what's the wise thing I must do? Yeah, first of all, yeah, I was just going to, what you just mentioned there, it's not a coincidence, it's a God incidence, because God works like that. I was just going to say what you said, that, that you could have all the wisdom if you want in the world, but the wisdom that really matters is, is what the Apostle Paul, you know, when he wrote to Timothy, said, you know, that, that the scriptures made him wise unto salvation. You know, and that is that is the wisdom that really counts. You know, this, this we've been talking about recently over the last few weeks is, is good. And what makes you wise unto having a good life, having a prosperous life and, and being safe. But the greatest wisdom of all is found in not not in not in a like I said we'll be talking about personifications here, you know, as 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 wisdom being a she or a he every now and then, or even an I. But the real wisdom that, that is above all things is Christ Jesus and, and he is a person. You know, you need to be wise unto salvation. You know, we, we do hope and pray that you've enjoyed this series and we're still going on, but this wisdom in comparison has nothing to do with, you know, all right, middle conversation. Some people have such skill. All right. Sorry, the wife quickly interrupted me. That's what wives do. She was showing me some, but... You, yeah, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to give a salvation mission. Bear with me one second. See? The skill involved in that. It is. How long is it? About five seconds. What, one, two... That's not. Just you know, 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 the, the, the wisdom that really makes it, the, the difference is being wise unto salvation. And that is to, to believe on Christ today. You know, religion, uh, well, every religion on earth, you know, teaches that, you know, in their so-called wise eyes, you know, we've got to behave ourselves. We've got to really struggle and strive to, to go to heaven. We've got to be really can. And, which is all found good, but that doesn't bring salvation. Real salvation comes through Christ and not through works, not through anything we can do. And it's not even of anything of ourselves. It is all literally of Christ. And, you know, I love using the scenario about putting all your eggs in one basket. You know, if you, if you had, you needed six eggs to go to heaven, all right? And the basket is Jesus Christ. It's no good putting three eggs in there and then three your own. You know, no good putting four eggs in there or five eggs, you've got to put all six eggs in that one basket. And that is what brings salvation. You know, and this is what we call as faith, or trust, or belief even. You know, when, if you want to go to heaven and you're genuine, if you could put all your trust, all your faith, all your belief in this Jesus Christ who loves you dearly today, you will go to heaven. It's not complicated. It's not religiosity we're, we're teaching and preaching. 
What we're teaching and preaching is relationship. Relationship with a loving God who from the beginning of time created us in his image and likeness to have a relationship with us. This all went pear shaped, or should I say even apple shaped or fruit shaped, you know, in the Garden of Eden, you know, when we fell short and we, and we, we disobeyed God. But even from that moment there, God in his love and his mercy and grace has purposed a plan all the way through history and to that day at Calvary where Jesus Christ died for all our wrongs, past, present and future. And this is how much he loves us this day. You know, this is God himself manifesting the flesh. He came down to earth, you know, with one purpose alone. You know, it wasn't to stay in the cradle or just to give us good advice and, and give us wisdom, which he did, all of those, but it was one purpose alone, that he would die so that we could live. Now, we trust today that this God himself, Jesus Christ, died for all our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried. And then he rose again victorious the third day, according to the scriptures, proven that he had power not over just death itself, but life as well. If we was to believe on these facts and in whom they walk, which is Jesus Christ, we will be saved. That's how easy salvation is. That's how easy this wisdom unto salvation is. And that is how easy it is to pass from death unto life. Again, we're not giving you religionity. We're offering you what Christ himself offered us, a restored relationship. And that's just simply by trusting him at his word. Take him at his word. You know, he says, you know, the word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is God himself quoted that. You know, and, and he's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent, which is to change his mind. If he has promised you this day, if you was to believe in him, put your trust in him, you would receive everlasting life. That is exactly what you receive. That is how simple it really is. You know, and we have one example. I'll just quickly give this because I love it. Luke loves it. I think anyone, anyone who's a grace believer, anyone who has a relationship with Christ and stuff, loves the example of the Philippine jailer. When he was just about to kill himself, you know, he didn't know religion, he didn't know about the, the, the rules and the regulations under Judaism. He was a Gentile, you know, and, and, and he said to them, you know, he said, Sirs, he said this to the apostles, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's how simple it was for him. He wasn't told, Oh, you've got an L. Uh, obey the Ten Commandments plus all the 613 other Judaic commandments. You've got to live a holy life. You've got to be good. You've got to pay your taxes. You've got to pay your offering. No. All he said is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So I pray that, that, that anyone watching this, if you want, you know, real deep spiritual wisdom in its simplest form, believe on Christ this day and live. And that is, that is, the, that is the gospel. That is the good news. That is wisdom personified in a person. And that is Jesus Christ. So I pray that you would you would do that. You accept Christ as Saviour. And that you would become a son or a daughter of the living God. And you would be then the wisest person on earth. I'll tell you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bill. That was a beautiful uh, presentation of the good news. And good news is uh, the definition of the, the Greek word gospel. And that certainly sounded like good news to me. It, uh, it's a joyful message that uh, how much God loves us and that eternal life in heaven is offered to all of us freely because Jesus loves us that much. He offers it to everyone. And all you gotta do is trust him completely and he'll give it to you. So thank you for that, brother. And thank you for joining me uh, in this uh, talk today. And we'll do this again next Wednesday during uh, Proverbs chapter nine. Uh, all right, uh, I'll end the show. And please, if you if you put your faith in Jesus today, uh, please just make a comment on this video. I, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear that. Bless you all in the name of our great savior God, Jesus Christ.